All right, it's recording. What is up, ladies and gents? We are back. I am the Guitarist 562, and I do video game guides and walkthroughs. And in today's video, I'm going to showcase the best PvP classes for global release and what I think you should pick. Um, number one first pick, in my opinion, is the Greatsword Dagger. It is one of the best classes in the game because not only are you able to handle multiple people um, attacking you, but you have a nice uh, build in your kit. So right now I'm using a tier two set, so ignore that. But these are some of the stats that you can kind of see. Um, I do get a lot of hit uh, if I switch my weapons based on my HP. Uh, based off your build, you do get a nice decent amount of evasion and endurance. Uh, it depends on how you build for. Now, the next thing is uh, the kind of stats that you can get. Now, this is tier two. Um, I haven't really updated it, but as long as you have like 50, 60 strength, you know, 50, 60 perception, you should be fine. And the reason why I like this class so much is because of the skills that you can have. Now, some of the skills that you can have is the ability to not only CC players, as you can see, I got the Stunning Blow, and I also have the Devastating Smash, um, along with being able to chain hook players into uh, melee range and stuff like that. So I can pull multiple people to me just like that. And with that one specific skill, um, with skill specialization and stuff like that, you can do a whole lot. Now, the reason I'm going to keep this brief is I don't want to bore you with all the details. You can look at the videos yourself. Um, ultimately, the main important thing about the uh, Greatsword Dagger, I mean, Greatsword SNS, is the fact that you have offhand shield capabilities that other classes don't. So what I mean by that is, as you can see, my shield block chance is 40%. Uh, on global, it's like 30% with a tier 1 set. And then you slap this bad boy on. And then you jump up to 71%, 80%. Even can go even higher with that with the right builds. For global, I mean with the general, the grand general set, I think you can get up to 70% as well. So that will allow people who are hitting you to not actually be able to hit you. So the next thing is um, the shocking stun. Like right here, 4 second stun. Okay, and after that, you can actually drop them onto the ground um, for like a prone block. So what that does is it actually drops them to the ground. To show that, I'm going to go ahead and go to some ads so I can show you because dummies just don't do it. So I'm just going to do like a comprehensive walkthrough on each class. And all I'm going to see, there's a select few of classes that I recommend. Obviously, there's A, B, C, D, and E, you know, tiers, but I'm not even going to mention them. There's a guy that made a video, and he just did a horrible job, in my opinion, because he never even touched Korea. So, look at this guy. So, if I really wanted to, I could stun him. Wait those three seconds. Three, two, and then, look, he's on the ground still, and that's just free damage. And, like, continue, like I continue the stun right there. So, for that entire time... I am literally just bullying someone to death. Not to mention that um, the SNS Greatsword also has the ability to give myself damage reduction. And now, uh, I don't know if you've seen some other videos, especially from Eli, but it may or may not do too much uh, uh, reduction. So I'm right now, mine is at 56. Slap that on, and my DR goes to 159. So that's pretty cool. You take a lot less damage. But ultimately, the real thing that I like about this class is the counter barrier, the ability to handle multiple classes at once, and your passive skills that scale with the amount of people that are attacking you. What I mean by that is, for example, here, if there are three or six targets and 700 plus, uh, it, it, it increases your defense by 700. So this is my defense right now. If I were to go into a huge mob of enemies, it would be a whole lot more. How much time do I got here? Because I don't want to get stabbed. All right, and I know it's going to be a long video, but like 29.90. Let's see. Let's see if it reflects on the actual thing. Yeah, you see? My defense went up. All right. But yeah, that is the uh, SNS uh, Greatsword. So, okay, here's another thing. Here goes Counter Barrier. And this is why this is one of my favorite classes because of stuff like that and then you can go in and if you really wanted to uh, you can get your health back too with your blocks like look at my HP and then you can also get your mana back too so you're just like a, you're literally a tank you're a, you're a monster so go in um, and on top of that you also get another bind like look at that this guy's stuck 
He's getting... He's dead already. Uh... Now you can choose the skills that you want, but that's just kind of like an introductory guide to what the SNS Greatsword is going to be. And I personally rank it as one of the um, S class uh, items in terms of like just versatility. It can it can tank, you can do DPS, you can get kills in Siege, you can do it's great for small scale, it's great for 1v1s, it's great for mid scale like GVGs, and it just really just stands above the rest and the ability to do multiple things. showcase the next build it's going to be the greatsword dagger the most infamous class in the game the most popular choice the top one everyone picks this class for the most part because of the fact that you can do so much you you skimp out on the shield block but you gain way more it's just consistent uh crowd control the ability to be elusive in cloak and the ability to just continuously have the highest amount of hit possible while also retaining your ability to just get out of sticky situations now the reason why the greatsword dagger is such a popular class is because of the fact that you get the ability to cloak and you get that extra evasion that you don't normally have so for example let's say this is my melee ranged and magic evasion once i roll because of my skill it jumps up because of certain passive skills such as this one right here once you have it maxed out shadow walker now, the reason this class is good, and like the reason I was showing you before, is like SNS Greatsword, you're able to stun people, but once you miss that stun, you're completely locked out and you're done. Now, with this build, you can have other ways to stop your opponent. What I mean by that is, for example, let's say he's binded right there for a couple of seconds, and then my knockup just doesn't work. Let's say I shock him. I use Ascending Slash, and let's say that doesn't work. He's on the ground. It worked. But I can add something else. So let's say something like this. He's right there silenced. And then I can kick him down. So that way you can continue to just bully people. Let me see if I can kill that guy. Huh. Okay, now he's dead. Alright, whatever. Fuck it. See, like that. Like, I missed my stun right there. And I can go straight back into it. So now I just cloaked and I can be a cheeky guy until I find my next stun right here, which is going to be ready in like six seconds. So this is a paladin. So we just got to wait for this guy to basically cool off. So I just go like this. Oh, he's getting up. Silence him. Nope. Kick him back down on the ground. Brutal incision. Throw some knives. And pretty much I just got to keep waiting. See, I missed my silence there, but look, that's fine. I could just use my other skill. I don't know who this guy is. But you saw that my silence doesn't always work. So when your silence doesn't work, you can go ahead and use your precision dash or you can use your devastating smash and anything to continue your knockup. As you can see, my reaction time to all that was poor. But yeah, I love the class. Let me go ahead and put another class. So now I'm going to show you guys the Longbow Dagger. Longbow Dagger is also one of the top tier classes in the game because of the ability to not only have great um, damage for sieges, but also the fact that you can heal your teammates now on top of being a really good DPS. So... Let's go ahead and place one of these. Uh, this pure healing touch is not that great right now. It's really good, but like right now, I'm just going to run this just to show you guys. So let's say 
there's like six or seven people in front of me. Like look at look at that look at that radius. All of these people within this radius are gonna get hit. So I, I did 6k right there. It's not even is it max level? Let me double check. No, it's level one. So if you get it to level five, it does a lot more damage. So imagine that in siege, and then you can hit it with a blitz, as you can see, and it, it went back up again. And now we can just do it one more time. So imagine two, three, four, maybe even five longbow players doing that. And you're just going to clean up an entire group that doesn't have e evasion. So obviously, um, I'm not going to have this build that I have right now. For, for example, for tier two set, uh, let's just not talk about builds. Let's just talk about overall usability and stuff like that. So with the longbow, you get nice mastery skills. Uh, as you can see, this is what I have. But the real thing is what you do with your skills. So I can use Shadow Strike. I can do the Prone Kick, put them on the ground, and continue to do damage that way. Okay. And if I want to slow someone down or do some nice AOE right here, I can. Now, you also got to run the right mastery skills. Let's see. Let's go ahead and reset all of that. Yeah. So I can add, for example, you know, more. Where is it? And additional count to two uh i can use this as a skill to kind of like re-maneuver my, my character so like look anytime i use it the first skill i could just move it doesn't burn any stamina whatsoever i can also increase the damage of my other skills let's say if i really wanted to use decisive sniping i won't i just don't like the way it is now it can one shot people but it's just kind of like not my cup of tea now so this is a really good class because of the fact like i said before you can actually build for certain things that you can in other classes. For example, at max level, I get 20% attack speed. Right here, I get uh, extra ability to you know crit on a bound target. So let's go ahead and put that. This weakened shield you might think is bad, but against crossbow dagger players, you basically have like a permanent shield. Now, health re regen increases by one away, and continuous health recovery from skills increases by 33%. So let's go ahead and actually take some damage let's see if we can go into a night dungeon and get attacked and showcase like how it looks firsthand for dungeons it's pretty good but again if you're doing this build it's mainly because you're trying to do pvp the reason i like this build is the same reason i like you know the great sword dagger any of the dagger skills is the ability to knock someone up and kick them see right here he's down on the ground nothing he can do about it Oh, he's going to attack me back. I'm going to go ahead and hide. And then you could just reposition. And look, as you can see, my shadow strike is coming back up. Um, and I, my flash arrow can actually stun somebody that's already cloaked. But, you know, you don't want to spend too long on these mobs. And you know, for people, it's fine because they're just, you know, going to be waiting for you to attack. They're not going to do what this NPC just did. So, you know, to just kind of showcase what the flash wave arrow looks like. Let's go ahead and see if we can get a group. All right, we have a decent sized group right here. Now picture this in Siege, all right? This is really what I want you guys to realize. Like, you know, multiple of these will be dangerous. So I'll charge that up. But before I do that, let me heal myself. Because there's another skill that I want you guys to see. That's two purifying touches. It's only green. All right, perfect. Now I'm done. Now look at my health. Like, I'm not even a healer, okay? And my health is already climbing back up to full. Now, imagine Purifying Touch at Epic. You're going to be healing substantially a lot more than what I'm healing for. So, trust me, this is um, a really good skill to have because you can heal your teammates for that much. I've seen people get attacked by Greatsword Dagger and go from 0 all the way to, well, not 0, 1 HP to, like, full because of the fact that they stack themselves with three purifying touches before they actually uh, in engaged. So, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and silence this guy again. All right, we got an enemy right here. We got this guy right here. Perfect.
Perfect. Oh, that guy died. If they're melee, you're going to have a hard time. But you're built to fight against magic and ranged. And that's fine as, as it should be. So if a, if a sword hits you with that stun, you're pretty much immobile. There's nothing that you can do to get out of it. Okay. But you can preemptively try to protect yourself with purifying touch and heal yourself uh, in advance. Or you can hit yourself with that nice little um, cloak. Again, don't worry about this build. That's not what we're using. I'm just showcasing the skills and I'm showcasing what it can and can't do. You're going to be using different builds when you have it on global. But I want to show you why this is an S grade um, class to choose from as well for global release. This is really good for small scale. It's good for mid scale and it's good for uh, large scale for siege. Um, because of the fact that you can do multiple meteors, this is a skill right here. That's why I really like this class. Now, the other uh, big pros to this class is this skill right here, which is called Echoic Barrier. When silenced, the silence duration decreases by two seconds. If either silence, bind, sleep is applied, the resistance for those skills increases by 590 for nine seconds. These are the four skills you can use to benefit your staff that you don't get anywhere else. Your burning damage increases by 72%. You get extra HP and mana increases by 3000. And you also get the heavy attack. These are the stats that I have currently. Um, I'm using the Wraith set. You would not be using this on uh, Global for Staff Dagger. You'd be using something else. But this is just so you can have an idea of what I have. Okay. So your heavy attack chance, which is kind of like the most important part, is right here. Range heavy attack 456. Ignore the melee because that's not relevant to me. Um, but these are some skills that you would be using when you're fighting people. So as you can see, I'm walking around and I have the ability to just cast my fireballs while moving let's say that character right there is like following me i don't like him i don't want him to follow me so i'm gonna hit him with one of these and now he's stuck and he slowed down so as you can see right there the settings it shows you so another thing too is i can actually same thing as before do a silence into a kick and then i can reposition myself back here to get my maximum damage that i get from ranged okay now this is another skill that you guys aren't aware of but if you were to hit them with fireball barrage like right here every single one of those fireballs can reduce the, your enemy's mana by a lot so it makes it really easy for them to lose because they have no way to counter you um because they're running out of mana which i have ten thousand of they probably have six to eight thousand it depends on their class um, the next skill, let's say there's a tank that you're, you're pushing into a 3v3 situation or a 5v5 There's a healer and you just kind of want to lock them out of the fight You hit them with that freeze and they can't do anything like look how long that freeze is There's 10 seconds left on that freeze and if they have debuff duration, it's obviously going to be um, a lot shorter but It's a good skill to have so again now I'm getting you know contested maybe multiple people are on me I'm gonna go ahead and cloak and now they have no idea where I'm at. And then I can just go straight into an automatic crit. So as you can see, it's an orange letter because it critted. Um, sorry, I could be wrong. Is that a person? Hold on. No, it's not a person. Had me jumpy there for a second. So again, this is why it's really good because it really can control the fights that you're having. And you can continue to doing what you want. And let's say you have a group and you want to hit a multiple you know people and siege or gbg you can have your meteor be one hit or you can have it be multiple so i'm going to show you what that looks like right here all right so we have a group right here wrong skill all right cloaked right there all right right here's fine sticky situation so I bail out but the reason why the staff dagger is so good is because of the fact that you get quick kills in succession it's very fast there's no real casting times you have versatility in your movement um, it's good for PvE and PvP but look And you could just get out of the situation if you really wanted to. Now, another like pro that I didn't mention here is this is my hit right now, 892. But if I really wanted to push my hit a little bit higher and then you can actually help your team is this skill right here called Victorious Energy. It increases my overall max damage by 45 and magic melee and ranged hit goes up and magic evasion 400 for 12 seconds. So let me go ahead and put that skill on. Give me one second. I'm not trying to get killed.
like these can all be like one video but i'd rather not let's go ahead and put victorious energy out i'm gonna get rid of the meteor because honestly it's not that big of a deal so i'm gonna go ahead and slap that on you saw what my hit was and look at my hit now 1292 1270 my evasion went up as well like i roll my evasion's up to like 2k like that's just insane that you get it from a specific skill and as you guys already know what evasion does is it helps you not get hit How awesome the one dagger still can potentially be so I'm gonna go ahead and see what skills I have active right now that's fine these are some potential skills that you can have in your actual build as the one dagger and the reason why this build is really good is because the fact that you can still have the time to kill people is very fast I'm gonna put my shield on so you guys can see for yourself. <laughs> I feel almost bad. All right. <laughs> All right. So basically, what I wanted to show you guys is something simple like that. Like, I saw the tank, I wanted to put him away, so I put him to sleep. Um,. And I got to fight the other guy who was easier to kill. Unfortunately, I killed the tank. That was not my intention. He says you don't have that. <laughs> All right. So that's a good, nice little uh, Easter egg. <laughs> anyway, so what you do is you want to build up your stacks. As you can see, two seconds in. And then, yeah, he's right. Killing three-day-old character. That actually makes a difference. You do not want to be in that position. So definitely gear up your character. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta say hi. Hold on, let me go apologize to this guy. But yeah, you definitely don't want to be under geared when you go into this dungeon because of stuff like that. Uh, I, I do feel bad for killing him. He is 100% under geared. Um, so if you are watching the stream, I apologize. But it's just to show you guys... Um, don't let that happen to you so i'm gonna go ahead and show you why the wand dagger is really good for um mid fights and large scale um because you can set up nice sleep bombs so i'm gonna go ahead and gather a bunch of these enemies here and then put them to sleep and anything that gets hit while slept the first hit is always going to be a crit or you can set it up to have two hits if you really wanted to which is really good because not only are they slept and they can take two hits because before it was annoying when you had one player um hit your target and then he woke up but now you don't have to worry about that so look there goes my touch of despair starts off with two stacks okay and then i put him to sleep and then i hit karmic haze hold on one second let me take this off you can use this block but i feel like this block is going to be also really good they're both really 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 good blocks this one gives you i think the cloak um but let me just because we're in here i'm going to throw this bad bad boy back on did i really just do that i completely forgot i put on no heal skills sorry noobs noob moment Uh, crossbow dagger is only going to be good in my opinion if you have the bell and deer crossbow or until you get tier 2 weapons I don't like it for pvp per se. That's just me But um, I know certain people do I I, I don't like it You can get kills with it, but like I, I just I'm not a fan 
So you're, you're gonna get outshined by a bunch of other classes. Let's see. All right, so let's go ahead and try that again. Hold on, I gotta increase the range on this bad boy too. Nope. Give me a second. All right, so we're here in the corner. Let's say that's just a bunch of enemies in siege. That guy's already at seven stacks of Curse of Despair. He's asleep. And then now I spread Karma Haze. And look at that. Oh, I just woke them all up. Come on, guitarist. Why are you playing like such a nub? It's a perfect amount of enemies, though. So hold up. But like, I'm not even attacking, I'm just blocking. And I'm spreading all this curse around. All right. Let's find this person right here. All right, let's, is this guy right here? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll get him. Five, from the case. All right, look, see, they're all slept. Now, if I really wanted to, I could just explode them right here. You know, with all that. And that helps your team out a whole bunch because you're helping them slow down the fight if it gets a little too hectic. And if you have, let's see. Let me go to hidden real quick. And if you have this skill right here where it says can be removed if attacked twice, you get two free hits on all of the opponents right here. So I'm going to do that again. Let me get this guy. He's full health right here. All right, so I'm going to go hit him with the uh, time for punishment, uh, corrupted magic circle, another curse, sleep, and then spread. And then look, all of them are getting all that damage. And look, all dead. And then I can just go back into cloaking and hiding. Now, you don't have to sleep bomb. Um, sleep bomb is still definitely very effective. I know before it was a lot easier and, you know, until they nerfed a lot of the damage into the ground. But it's still extremely effective when hitting a lot of people. And you have really the choice whether you want to run the wand block or you want to run the dagger block. But the reason why I like the wand block so much is because you saw just, just by existing and blocking in the middle of a crowd, you can spread your curse. So let's say like right here. Look, look at these guys. And you can heal yourself too. Look, look. If you perfect block, you can heal yourself. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start spreading curse. Here's time for punishment, corrupted magic circle, uh, sleep, and then spread. And then just like that, I slow down the fight. And I could just blow them up if I really wanted to. And again, ultimately, I can also stand there and take damage by putting on the shield. Look. But uh, on top of the shield, you can set on a fountain that gives mana towards your teammates, yourself. Um, I rank it up there as well as one of the S classes for, you know, global release. Because this skill right here, uh, just itself, it, it, it gives you, let's see, fountain of life radius increases by 2 meters. And let me show you how wide that is. Plus mana increased by 40 when healed. And then look at this. Look how massive that is. And it could just, in, in a large scale setting, you're healing all six party members right there. Now, one thing that you don't know is you cannot heal people outside of your party, even in a GBG setting, but you can heal people outside of your party with your singular heal, which is this right here, swift healing. You can select someone that's green or in your alliance and you can actually heal them. So you can heal up to three people by going one, two, three. 
uh, A or S tier, whatever you call it. I'm only showcasing the best classes that I've seen in Korea in PvP, GVG, large scale, mid scale, and small scale. Paladin is by far one of the best classes to choose from and its ability to shut people down and stay alive. Um, because unlike Wan Dagger, if you get pushed down and stunned, it's really hard for you to, you can stay alive, but it's just hard for you to kind of like push back and keep your whole team alive because as you guys already know as a healer you are already going to be focused on by multiple players but being a paladin allows you to get that extra defense if you wanted to i could even put blessed barrier on um on top of like in my skill rotation if i really wanted to like i stay here like i got the barrier on look at all these misses i'm gonna keep standing here okay now i'm gonna throw counter barrier on Okay, now counter barrier is going to be on cooldown. Now let's go ahead and throw like my DR up. And then maybe while I'm waiting for my other skill up, I throw this down. Maybe I want to block. Look at my HP. Let's say I want to just stand there and take a couple hits when I start swinging on people. Like, you know, I can go ahead and put Touch of Despair. I could put, you know, same thing, spread the curse, Karma Caves, and just spread the explosion. This is the only thing missing from my build. Now, another thing that I can do is this skill right here, which is Immortal Pride, which allows me to increase my HP. And look at my HP. Once it's done, it's going to increase my health regen by, I think, a, a significant amount. So now it's done. I got that little free pot. And then my HP is going up. Go ahead and put the right block on because I forgot to have the counter barrier on because this is what gives me my shield block chance. So why would you pick a paladin? Well, for GVG, you're going to have boon stones and rift stones and it's going to be extremely important to hold down certain points. And if you have, let's say, three to four paladins, maybe five paladins, locking it down with their shield right here and preventing them from touching the actual um, animation, like let's say press F to, to capture the thing, and you're just standing there being like an annoying little rock. Like people say, oh, well, you can't really kill anything. Yeah, I mean, your your goal is to support and heal players. And that's the thing about these type of games is that people don't realize that there's roles that you all play. And you can you can get kills, but that's not your number one priority. And the reason why I rank it up there as, you know, A or S is the ability that it counters so many classes just by existing. Like, like I'm not even struggling to stay alive here. So I can even go to some harder sections to showcase that. But really, I just kind of want to show you guys the survivability because... All of that is extremely important. So, to kind of show you guys, I'm going to go ahead and fly to another area to see what kind of like zones you should be protecting. Let's see. Let's go to Azrael. It's right here. That's Shadow Crypt. Right here. But yeah, this is why I feel like the Paladin is... You know, AS, you, you can put it wherever you want. All the classes that I'm recommending, I consider S or A. I'm not going to give them a, a letter because everyone has a differing opinions. I just consider them some of the best classes to choose from, and you choose from yourself what you want to do. So let's say, for example, you have a party of, let's say, not, not that you would, but let's just say you have like six different paladins in different parties, and you're just kind of hanging out right here nobody's going to be able to capture this if all of you guys are trading heals and then using like for example later on in the future you're going to have like tier two uh, uh weapons like this one right here heals you just by existing like look you can't see it now hold on let me get hit but i'm going to continuously get healed um while that's happening so let's say i want to pull more than one person let's say right here Look at that. See, I just pulled multiple people. They're binded there. Good crowd control. Can you guys... Can more of these guys hit me? Jesus. I need more damage. They're not... My, my HP regen is doing too much. 
Alright, let's see if I can get some more damage. Come on. I need I need more. I need more damage. For some reason my my weapon is bugged. Alright, let's go ahead and switch back. Please hit me more. <laughs> That's insane. I'm sorry, guys. But it, it's just crazy how all this happens just passively. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little health regen. And look at that. I'm just... <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me go to a harder zone so you guys can actually see some stuff. Like This is insane. I apologize. And I'll just edit this stuff out. Oh, what? <laughs> That's insane. Okay, I gotta actually move a little farther up. It's just like the last thing I want to show you guys. I, I want you guys to be well informed before you make a decision. And again, I'm recruiting. It's in my Discord. I have 10 spots left. Go ahead and apply. We're going to be in NA East and we're going to be going to Cherno. Um, we have 10 spots left in my guild. So if you want to join up and not get, you know, basically farmed by the entire server, you want to join a decent guild. You want to have an alliance, you want to have friends, etc., etc. All right, come on, hit me. If you guys don't know what's happening, um, every time I evade, I'm getting mana. That's another thing that happens with this class, which I really like. Okay, so now I'm actually getting hit. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, the wand special ability, which says right here, it says Clay Salvation heals friendly players health by 50% of base damage per second for 6 seconds. I guess it's not gonna work on me. Rip. Sorry, guys. User error. Skill issue. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. Um, I enjoy getting kills, so I would make a paladin just to bully 1v1s. Probably one of the best 1v1 classes out there, but... If I want to have fun and kill, get a bunch of kills, I would definitely not use a paladin, um, mainly because you're. For me, as a support player, I'm so focused on keeping people alive, uh, blocking off of captures, and you can occasionally do a sneak bomb here, here and there. You can if you if you have the heaven one, you you'll be more dangerous. But I don't want you guys to be hopeful with that because that's just all over the place. And just like that, I did did twenty thousand damage to him. <laughs> post nerf build that i am using is three piece wraith two piece uh sacred uh that's the build that i have currently right now so do i like it for 1v1s not so much do i like it for a small scale not so much i mean it can help but if you're focused it's really hard to stay alive because you don't have the abilities like dagger does with the cloaking yes you can save yourself with purifying touch and flash wave however it is extremely difficult because you do not have the evasion like other classes you do get the 400 plus evasion with victorious energy but again it's not the same um i can't really stress that enough uh but you can get some decent kills with this because you have two damage classes as opposed to just um, running away. So look here, I can bind this target, do my skills, do my fireballs. While I'm stunned, I'm still hitting. And then I can keep doing more damage. Or if I let's say I'm not, I'm missing, you know, my hits on my target, I can put put it on victorious energy here. So as you can see, my current hit is... Hold on, let me go ahead and fix that right now. Let me kill this guy real quick and fix that. Well, another thing I could show you while I'm doing that is... Let's say I'm running out of mana. No problem. You saw that? Just full mana right away. 
So let me go ahead and remove one of my skills. So um, I can keep Blitz. I cannot keep Blitz. I can keep Ensnaring Arrow for... I would keep it because it's awesome. Um, but let's say let's put on Healing Touch. So I could put that actually on myself. So... Look at how much HP I'm regenerating. 197, 197, 390, 390, 390. And then the last one is 587. So every second I get that. So as long as I keep that on, no one can pretty much kill me. So you're like a pseudo healer. You could use that in dungeons to heal specific you know, party members. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can take a little bit of damage. Hopefully not kill myself. Let's see if this is enough people to actually do enough damage on me. Like, look at my HP. Alright, so that's three. That's not enough. So I'm going to go ahead. And see if I can get a little bit more towards me. So while that's happening, hold on. I don't want to lose my buffs. So I'm going to have to recalibrate that. So right now, this is my evasion all that jazz. Alright, so there. I'm done. Looks like this isn't enough to get me killed. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six players. As long as I keep throwing that on, I should be good. But you don't want to lose this. It's right here. Six seconds. You want to make sure that's capped out. I'm trying to get some more enemies so I can get some more damage on me. All right, so now I'm losing some HP. And then I'm gonna hit myself with a flash wave. Another flash wave. And then let's say I throw on victorious energy so I can up my uh, evasion. And now my hits much higher. I'm, obviously, I should fix this. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this while I'm getting attacked. Like, I could literally be in my menus. It's fine. Now we're losing some HP. Now, again, you wonder why would you want to pick this class? And it's for the ability to heal, not only heal yourself, but to hit multiple targets. You can use Meteor. You can use Salvation Chain to save a teammate. You can um, use Flash Wave with Blitz and then just do extra damage. You could be in the back line. You can really just kind of survey the entire area when you are this class. So, like, I'm, st I'm literally still here. <laughs> I lost my purifying touch, but it's fine. Are we going to do that one more time with flash wave, with a double uh, flash wave so you guys can see what it looks like. Put on victorious energy. And as long as you have this little item right here, it's pretty useful. So you really have to decide what do you want in your kit. Are you going to be focused on stopping players? So let's say you're passing by you're in the back line, someone's chasing you. Hit them with that ensnaring arrow. Maybe that wasn't enough. Maybe you don't want to actually hit people. You know, let's say there's a tank right here to your right. 
You freeze him, and if you have Blitz, you can freeze up to two people. Let me go to another skill. Let's say someone's chasing you really bad. You want to get out of there? Two smoke screens right there. So, there's a number of skills that you can use with this class, and this is why I rank it as one of the best PvE and PvP classes. This is probably the best all-around class, I would say, for PvE and PvP, because you can be a healer, you can be a damage, you can be in PvP. It's the most comfortable build that you can have out there. So, honestly, I put this at the top of the list if you really don't want to think, but you also want to play in multiple things without getting, you know, kicked. Are you going to be in the front line, you know, as a longbow dagger, staff dagger, or the first choice when it comes to, like, SNS greatsword or greatsword dagger? No, but for siege, that's where you really shine. final build that i recommend that you can enjoy and it is constantly using korea in 3v3s i've seen it in large scale and i've seen it in 1v1s so the reason why this is really good is because you may not have the dagger passive of cloaking but you do get all the benefits of the hit that you get from the great sword um passive abilities and not this plus uh you know like Victorious energy will increase your hit altogether even more along with Da Vinci's courage to give you attack speed if you really wanted to um, But it's just really good. Uh, these aren't the skills that you know Some people may or may not use but these are just some examples that you can use So the reason why it's good. It's let's say someone you stun right you can follow up with that run block Maybe he got away and you want to you want to get you want to get some range. Let's say your stun failed and you want to get out of there you want to just run you can still keep doing damage to this guy just from being all the way back here you get the benefits of crowd control and the benefits of range at the same time uh, honestly i'm surprised a lot of people uh started running this little later but greatsword staff is definitely used a lot uh what, do i rank it as s tier i'm not sure um but the other classes i mentioned in the video have consistently been used but this has been like a new thing that i've been seeing in arenas and i've been seeing it in gvgs have i seen it in large scale mm, uh, i haven't seen too many of these but it is definitely a good combo this is my last recommendation because look let's say this guy right here i stun him knock him up get out of there Let's say I want to run away. I could just get away. Run away. Let's say I see the next guy right here. Someone's catching up. We got a dip. We'll come back. <laughs> Do our finishing moves. And you can really just kind of control your own fight in that way. But if you do get stunned, you have the uh, silence resist that you get from the staff passive. But that's about it. And what I mean by that is this right here. Uh, Echoic Barrier. But it's a good class. I'm not going to show too much of it because, again, like this is there's other classes that are picked over this one. But this is a nice toxic arenas 3v3 build that I've seen you know come into fruition because of the fact that you can stun people so and you know, if you really want to stun even more people you have the shock stun you have the prone block um you have the devastating smash and then you can actually add more stuff you can have the um the freeze right here 
Uh, from the Ice Spear, you can also have Ice Bound Tomb, another bind skill. You can change it to a bind skill, it says right here. Where is it? Let's see. Movement speed applied. It instead binds the target instead of freezing. So that's pretty much it. So thank you guys for watching. That's all, what is it, like nine builds that I recommend and everything else. Uh, it's all right. I mean, SNS Dagger is going to be really good. But early game, but then late game, it just kind of drops off. So I wouldn't even invest time into it unless you want to just troll people. At the That's beginning. pretty much it for the, today's video. I didn't mention the crossbow dagger because without the Bellender crossbow or the tier two bows, I feel like it just doesn't do what I would prefer in a GVG setting. So um, I'm not listing it in one of my options. It's really good for PVE. For PVP, though, it can be very useful, especially with shotgun blasts. But it's just not one of my top picks. It's going to be very uh, common to see more melee and more like staff and longbow ranged uh, in your GVG and siege uh, fights for the most part. You will see a lot of crossbow daggers uh, if they start dropping the bell into your crossbow and among other things. But um, I mean, you can use it. It's just personally, it's not my personal favorite. So it's still a strong viable class, especially later on when you get the Dawn Mist set with, you know, the 250 plus evasion. But again, not something I personally enjoy, um, but yeah. That's it for today's video. Subscribe if you enjoyed it and share with anyone that wants to see some in-game, you know, walkthrough of what's to be expected for global. Thanks guys. Stay blessed.